Good morning. This Mass is being offered for Joseph Belomo, the entrance antiphon. Hail, Holy Mother, who gave birth to the King, who rules heaven and earth forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Good morning, everyone. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries worthily. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all of the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Pardon the faults of your servants, we pray, O Lord, that we who cannot please you by our own deeds may be saved through the intercession of the mother of your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, learn from myself and Apollos not to go beyond what is written, so that none of you will be inflated with pride in favor of one person over against another. Who confers distinction upon you? What do you possess that you have not received? But if you have received it, why are you boasting as if you did not receive it? You are already satisfied. You have already grown rich. You have become kings without us. Indeed, I wish that you had become kings so that we also might become kings with you. For as I see it, God has exhibited us apostles as the last of all, like people sentenced to death, since we have become a spectacle to the world, to angels and men alike. We are fools on Christ's account, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are held in honor, but we in disrepute. To this very hour, we go hungry and thirsty. We are poorly clad and roughly treated. We wander about homeless and we toil, working with our own hands. When ridiculed, we bless. When persecuted, we endure. When slandered, we respond gently. We have become like the world's rubbish, the scum of all to this very moment. I am writing you this not to shame you, but to admonish you as my beloved children. Even if you should have countless guides to Christ, yet you do not have many fathers, for I became your father in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. The, the Lord, Lord is, is near, near to all who call upon him. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. The, the Lord, Lord is, is near, near to those who call upon him. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord keeps all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. The Lord, the Lord is near, is near to all who call upon him. May my mouth speak the praise of the Lord, and may all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. 
The Lord is near to call upon him. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While Jesus was going through a field of grain on a Sabbath, his disciples were picking the heads of grain, rubbing them in their hands and eating them. Some Pharisees said, why are you doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? Jesus said to them in reply, Have you not read what David did when he and those who were with him were hungry? How he went into the house of God, took the bread of offering, which only the priest could lawfully eat, ate of it, and shared it with his companions? Then he said to them, The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. He is Lord of everything. He is the ruler and designer of every part of our lives. Jesus says at the end of the gospel, the Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath, and therefore reminding those who are criticizing him, the Pharisees, always looking at what is wrong, always looking at what's empty, always looking at what's not pleasing to them, and pointing it out. That happens in all of our lives, especially in these days where there is so much confusion, there's so much upsetment, there is a a tremendous amount of worry and anxiety. There's a lot going on in our world, and it's a reminder as we encounter the Pharisee and the Lord over something very minuscule to the law that we're reminded of his words that he is the Lord of the Sabbath, but he is Lord of everything, that God is in control. I don't know about you, but I have to remind myself of that, not just on a daily basis, but many times in the course of a day, that God is control, in control. And to give to God what belongs to God. And that means every fear and worry every trouble, every searching moment of our heart, every anger and disappointment, we give it to the Lord, not throwing it to Him as if there's nothing more I can do, but giving it to Him so that He might empower us, that He might open our hearts to a new vision, a new way of thinking, a new way of life, and ultimately and most importantly, to a real trust. So often in these days, we are perplexed by many things. And it may have nothing to do with what's going on in the world, our nation, or our church. It might just be a situation in our, in our own lives that we're struggling with, in our family, in work. And we think we have to figure it out. And we're weighed down by it. We're troubled by it. And we think, is there any light at the end? This gospel, while it focuses on a small part of the letter of the law that the Pharisees are so always, is so perplexed by. Jesus says, but I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. I take care of you. I take care of everything. I am the author of everything. I think it's a reminder for me and for all of us that we have to allow God to give us the direction we need that he is the Lord of every darkness in our lives. He is the God who is with us. He is the Savior who has redeemed us, yes, from all of our sins, but also as Redeemer has anointed those troubling moments of our lives and has brought us through them before, and we'll do it again. We just must turn to him and trust and surrender. And I know that sounds like a a usual refrain, something we hear so often and people encourage us with, but then why don't we do it? 
Why don't we entrust everything to him? <clears throat> Take a step back ourselves and allow him to be the Lord of life, the Lord who shows us the way. Whatever it is we're struggling with at this moment, today, or this part of the day, God only knows what today will bring. We give it to him. As I said, we need to be reminded of this constantly, not to bear the weight ourselves. God gives us so many people and so many different ways to help us. We just must open our eyes wider, our hearts deeper, and not in any way be like the Pharisees, small-minded, or wanting to figure it out on their own terms, but to be truly Christ's disciples, to be truly his anointed ones, who can only take from, only can give to others what we've taken from him ourselves, what he has given us, peace of heart and mind. We entrust our cares and concerns and these prayers to our loving God and the intercession of Mary. That God may continue to bless this church with holy and sacrificial servants, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Son of Man, Jesus, Lord of the Sabbath, may deliver the whole world from the evils that abound in it. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord may be pleased to shower his tender compassion upon those who are hungry or mired in poverty. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God's bountiful love may help members of this faith community heal any divisions in our families or relationships. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died in Christ may inherit with him the riches of his kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own special intentions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Entrusting all of our cares to the love of Jesus through Mary, we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite hearts, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, this day and pleasing in your sight. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we bring you, 
and grant that, enlightened by the Holy Spirit and encouraged by the example of the Blessed Virgin Mary, our hearts may always seek out and treasure the things that are yours. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to earth's bounds, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her, the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. 
may he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Teresa of Calcutta, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, religious, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. My friends, at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Praise the Lord our God, for in Mary, his handmaid, he has fulfilled his promise of mercy to the house of Israel. Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation and of faith, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that we who devoutly honor the Blessed Virgin Mary may be worthy to share with her in the charity of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Have a wonderful day, everyone.